Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Rox with just a little talk about what's at the top of the block, so let's get to it. All right, you guys, first order of business, I didn't win the lottery. I did not win the Powerball for $550 million, did you? I'm assuming that maybe you didn't either. Maybe if you was in Arizona, Missouri, um, if I have a viewer out there, um, if you did indeed win, my birthday is coming up the day after Christmas, so y'all don't forget about old Rocky. I'm telling you guys what, I went and bought my little three tickets because really I'm feeling like you don't really got to be buying no hundred and two hundred and three hundred dollars worth of tickets. It only takes one ticket to win, right? Okay, well why not just buy one out of my three, right? And that took all of my little six dollars. I was like, it's two dollars? What happened to the damn one dollar lottery? But anyway, y'all, I went on to put my six dollars down and I was really... All last night dreaming about what I would do if I did win that lottery. That kind of money could change so many people's lives. And uh, I just, I'm telling you, I was just like, man, it would, it must have, whoever woke up this morning and found out that they had that winning ticket, those two, those two tickets, I can't even imagine what it would feel like to be them at this time. Did you, did any of you guys play? Did you guys really start and sit down and think, what would you do if you got that kind of money? You could do so much for your families. You could take a hundred million dollars and do a whole lot and still have a lot left for yourself. So yeah, I just, I just, man, I'm telling you. But anyway, we ain't gonna stay on that too long. It's over and back down to 40 million. I am gonna play, I think for the rest of the, the year because man, I feel like, I mean, why why not Rocky? I feel like I deserve a break. So yeah, I'm gonna keep on playing, but damn, $550 million. Can you imagine? We, we got to discuss. Now listen, I know that this happened on Thanksgiving Day, but I haven't talked to you guys uh, on the top of the block since the day before Thanksgiving. So this story right here almost brought me off my Thanksgiving break. I almost came back to do a top of the blocks early just so I could talk about your boy Gabriel. For real, you guys? Did you guys? Okay. I, first of all, let me just get to what happened. It's been so many stories surrounding it. And that's why I didn't come back early because I knew that it would be more to the story as time went on. Originally, they were saying that Halle Berry had um, a, a, a Thanksgiving dinner with both her boyfriend and the baby daddy. It turned out that wasn't what it was. I think they're saying now that Gabriel was dropping his daughter back off at the house. Um, evidently, the nanny is supposed to be the one that takes the baby um, so that he and Hallie has no contact with each other. And instead, Olivier Martinez showed up at the door. Some words exchanged, and then there was what uh, <laughs> I guess we could call a scuffle. But for real, you guys, did you guys see the picture? <laughs> oh my God, he got fucked up. I was just like, Damn. I'm gonna need you to, if you're gonna be getting into fights with people. Now, see, y'all hear me talk about it all the time. Y'all hear me say that I'm not a fighter, right? Roxanne knows how to maneuver within a situation so that I don't compromise myself. I'm not going to get into a fight because I know I cannot fight. That's it. Okay, I'm not fixing to go talking to nobody. Ain't got shit to say. If things look like they about to get a little bit out of hand, I, I get out the way. I know how to shut the fuck up. I don't want no problems, right? <laughs> okay, well... <laughs> I'ma need Gabriel Autry to take that same type of advice. You a model, okay? This is what you do is you go and you be cute somewhere. You go sit your ass on a shoot and you let them point the camera at you and you smile for the camera, okay? That's all you need to know how to do, okay? We don't need you to get up in there and talk to no damn actor. What the fuck was what, what was the conversation that you had that you that you felt like you was about to do something? Now, I know Gabriel's tall and the Olivia Martinez guy, he don't look like he's all that big or anything like that but fuck he's an actor okay and i know he didn't been into a lot of a lot of you know he didn't been in a whole bunch of movies where even though he probably had a stunt and everything a stunt double and everything he still had probably had to learn how to be you know he had to learn how to be kind of wiry be able to take care of it okay i know that motherfucker had some jujitsu training but fuck you out here trying to fight fucking olivier for okay he took that swing y'all know that fucking swing probably didn't even could connect you know how the movies when somebody swing and they whole body come around i bet you that olivier must have caught his ass when he was about to come down and he fucked him up y'all did y'all see his face oh my god his fucking eye was so damn big it was so big and black that shit looked angry the, the eye was mad okay y'all it was just like you fucking let somebody hit me in this bitch 15 times <laughs> I was just 
like, damn, okay, and the other side of his face, that other eye was just like, you know, I was trying to get out the way, you know, I knew the other eye was, but that one eye, that shit looked like it was just about to pop the fuck out his face, okay, if he ain't had no eyelid, that shit have been on the ground, <laughs> oh, oh, I bet you that was a whole bunch of, whole bunch of, whole bunch, I bet you that shit was something to see, damn, and then when you saw Olivier afterwards, the motherfucker had a splint on his hand. Okay, I'm thinking like, now if you look the way Gabriel looked after the fight, fuck, the other person better be dead, okay? You go on a goddamn model shoot was just like, uh, yeah, you should see the other person. The other person looked just fine, okay? Olivia said, look, that the, the damn paparazzi caught him when he was coming out the hospital, and they was like, how do you feel? And the motherfucker said, fine. <laughs> he got his ass beat. I'm talking about fuck up, okay? Damn, you a model and you the fuck that? See, this is the thing here. Gabriel Autry is a model. He makes money with his face, okay? But he didn't even really have to be doing that no more because, you know, I had told you guys a while ago that Halle Berry, you know, that the settlement was, the, the custody arrangement was that she couldn't take the daughter out of the United States. And, um, you know, she was ordered to pay him $20,000 a month. I don't really know what has to happen for you to fuck up your $20,000 a month. Okay, what really do you have to be going through in life for you to fuck up your twenty k a month? You can talk about me. You can say whatever you want. Y'all know how much I love my mama. You can talk about my mama, okay? I don't give a fuck. All I know is on the first, that goddamn $20,000 better be in my bank account, okay? <laughs> now, all of it, we got all these restraining orders. We don't know who gonna be having a baby, what's gonna happen. You know, it's just all gonna depend on what the judge sees. If the judge feels like it's Olivia's, Olivier's fault or Halle Berry is more at fault, then, um... Is probably gonna work out in the Gabriel guy's you know favor if it doesn't if the judge doesn't see it that way then he then fucked over all his stuff okay they gonna be them took that baby out to Paris and he ain't even got shit to show he can't even get out there cuz motherfucker got you know he can't get his modeling gigs cuz his face is fucked up you know that's gonna take some time to recover that shit had cuts and lacerations and bruises and you know that shit was bagged up and black and blue and purple and I was like Fuck, they say he broke some of his ribs and everything. It's like, God damn. Nigga, was you participating in the fucking fight? Like, did you fall on the ground and just just lay there and let the motherfucker just jump and kick on you and everything? It's just like, damn, did he get one swing in? I know he didn't. He too cute to be up here trying to fight. Okay, motherfucker, put you some goddamn Calvin Klein underwear on and sit your ass down, okay? Put your hands in your pants and look sexy. Okay, that's all we require to you. Get your fucking twenty thousand dollars a month, and you know what? Sit the fuck down. Okay, so I don't. Uh, we gonna see what happens with this case, but I was just like, boy, 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 that Olivier. Okay, my fucking wiry, ain't he? He fucked him up. stop talking about this Elmo uh, Elmo case because I know it upsets the women uh, all you mothers out there that got little babies with the Elmo toys out there but you guys like I said it's been a third accuser I told y'all it was gonna be a Tiger Woods situation didn't I we have a third accuser who's also saying that he met Mr. Clash in a um talk uh, a chat line an internet chat line and um hi <laughs> When he was 16 years old, he met him in this chat line when he was 16 years old and that they got together. And uh, the guy is saying that, um, you know, Mr. Clash gave him some Jesus juice, okay? <laughs> got him a little drunk, you know? And, and then after he would after he would manicure him, and I was like, boy, that Mr. Clash must be a nice motherfucker, ain't he? Right before you about to get the box served, okay? You get down there and cut all your bush away. I think that is really, really sweet of him. See? See, y'all? Even, you know? That, that all them years of being there almost made him be sensitive. <laughs> anyway, after he shaved a motherfucker down, then he will, you know, he would go on down and give some oral sex, okay? And and I guess Mr. Clash has some morals because Mr. Clash, he wouldn't have sex with him. He would just give him oral sex and then he stick his fingers up the ass. They wouldn't actually, he wouldn't allow himself to have actual physical sex with this person, with these kids, until they turn 18 years of age. So, hey! 
you know, I like I said, I knew this was the reason why Kevin Clash had retired or quit or whatever he did with Elmo because he knew it was going to be more stories. And uh, it's unfortunate. I'm starting to believe with more and more people come out um, that, yeah, it really did happen. Now, the sad part about it is all these people that's coming out, they wait until they like fucking 30 years old. All of a sudden, they got problems. No, they see the money opportunities and they jumping on it. This guy is now 28 years old. He's coming out when, when he was having a relationship with this man back when he was 16, 17, 18 years old. Like, what? It took you 10 years to figure out that you was fucked up from it? Like, I don't really understand. So, it's sad on both ends. It's sad that these people are taking advantage of the situation, but it's also sad that Kevin Clash put himself in them uh, situations. And I, you know, I keep on telling you, I quit fucking around with these kids, but you know what? I ain't gonna say it no more. Um, so what do you guys think about what Jamie Foxx said about President Obama at the Soul Train Awards? He came out on stage and he was just like, everybody give uh, honor and praise to our Lord and Savior, Barack Obama. Stupid. Just a dumb thing to say. Um, I know that he's a comedian and uh, I understand and I really do give comedians a lot of leeway. I wasn't really bothered by the comment because I know that he probably didn't mean it that way but there's a lot of people that do um take these things very seriously um and uh, you just can't get up there and say stupid shit like that not only that but i think it's bad that um you know we are it's already a lot of savior complexes that a lot of the republicans a lot of the conservatives like to say that we as black people um specifically have for barack obama and that we look at him as if he's just like this other world being you know and that he is so above everything that we look at him as a savior and this kind of thing saying this kind of thing just does not help it um it overshadows the good that barack obama has done and um it just kind of confirms what they say about us and that we don't really know why we like him we just like him because he's black i, I just wish that he hadn't said it um and then i wish that he didn't downplay it i wish that he would apologize and say yeah it was a dumb thing to say i shouldn't have said it instead of him trying to say that he's just a comedian and you know people need to loosen up people are not going to loosen up okay you need to learn how to fucking talk and show some damn forethought before you say stupid shit but anyway tell me what you guys think All right, how many of you guys bought the Nicki Minaj new album, uh, Roman Pink Friday, Roman Reloaded, Re-Up, or whatever the fuck it was called? She re-released an album that did not do well originally, I don't think, and uh, I don't know why they thought it was going to do well this second time around, but um, I think they said it sold about 34,000 uh, copies the first week and that it was debuted at number 28, which has got to be a guaranteed flop. For Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj is saying that the reason why she didn't do that well is because all these carriers refused to carry her album. You know, I don't really know how true or false that is. I would imagine that that would be some effect on your album sales if nobody could get to it in the damn stores. And you, you know, a lot of people still do buy albums physically in the stores instead of just getting it on iTunes. So there could be some truth to that. But I think the main part of it is just that nobody wanted that bullshit. Okay, now the CD was cool enough um, but it had fucking 17 songs on there. Like, I don't really know why she didn't just make it be like eight or nine songs long and then just come out with another album later. Instead, she, you know, I just, I didn't really understand the reason that they was coming out with this album all over again, add a couple of songs to it. And, you know, it just was a waste of time and money and effort to me. Um, and not only that, but they didn't really seem to promote it that much. Like, I didn't hear much about it. I actually forgot about it. All I really heard about was Rihanna's album, which did very well. You know, she debuted at number one. This was her first time debuting as um, at number one in the United States. Evidently does. I mean, she does well all over the world, but I guess... Um, you know, she is a world artist and uh, the other countries really do have her support. You know, they do support her. This was the first album that, you know, she debuted at number one. So, you know, people were trying to pit the two against each other. Um, no competition, obviously. Okay. Rihanna outsold her by 175,000 copies at least. Talk show host Wendy Williams is uh, posing new for PETA in their campaign that they have where they get a celebrity to uh, say that, you know, they'd rather go nude than wear fur. Um, she is a new model. They have a lot of people that do it every year. I know Nia Long did it once, Khloe uh, Kardashian. They've had, uh, I think, Ocho Cinco maybe. They've had a couple of football players. Um, just a lot of people that have done it. 
and uh, you know it's a big deal she looks good in the campaign if you guys have seen the pictures of her you know Wendy Williams is another person to me who looks better outside of her clothes she has a really nice body she's just big okay she's got humongous titties but she's got no stomach no weights her waist is super tiny and she's very proportioned um, she's just very very tall and you know very statuesque and you know just broad and big and everything but all in the right places so if you guys look for the picture y'all just look it up and see um, Wendy Williams is having a couple of legal problems though um, she evidently had a shoe line uh, called Adorn they were her and her husband was trying to get it off the ground here they were getting it manufactured in China and uh, something happened somewhere and the Williams did not pay the bill. It was like a, over a $400,000 bill that wasn't paid. They made over 34,000 shoes, 34,000 pairs of shoes. And uh, the manufacturer was like, motherfucker, somebody gonna pay me my goddamn money. Okay, so what they did is they went to the people that made the shoes and stole one of the damn managers okay <laughs> kidnapped them and uh, held on to them for two weeks okay because they was just like we want our money so um the owners of the of the manufacturing company they was in hiding and you know they didn't want to they didn't want to come out they was afraid see evidently the shit don't work the same in the united states as it do out in china okay so you ain't gonna get my goddamn money okay well then i'm just gonna steal somebody okay and then you're gonna give me my money and then if i feel like it i'm gonna give you your person back and we're gonna make sure that you know he all right but until then you know you ain't gonna see chung wang lee until, <laughs> until you get my fucking money <laughs> so after some legal issues was going on there they finally released the person okay but everybody is trying to figure out when they're gonna get their money so the, the the manufacturers are saying like you know we gonna sue wendy williams in new york city if you, she don't come up with this money we gonna sue them because we can't be having our fucking family get stolen like what we supposed to do um wendy williams and her husband haven't had any comment i guess they're gonna try to get it settled you know and not with too much fanfare So many people just walking around my car, looking in the car, the facilities, maintenance people right next to me. Uh, I'm just talking every now and then. I'll just look up at them and smile. But I know they want to ask me something. That maybe if I might get them on camera. <laughs> Somebody get Cat Williams. Now, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about Cat Williams no more because I think we all now realize that Cat Williams has a mental problem and uh, it is being exacerbated by the fact that he is on drugs. Okay. It, it, it can't be no other explanation. People don't just act this crazy just because they own drugs something has to really make it induced and stronger and uh cat williams is a perfect example he's like maya campbell i really think that he has a lot of her same issues it just keeps on happening over and over again he hasn't hit rock bottom and nobody is stopping him so the newest thing y'all is cat williams was out on his a three-wheel motorcycle in Sacramento you know he was driving very radically across the roads you know on the wrong side of the roads you know doing whatever he was doing and the police wanted to pull him over Cat Williams ain't had time he can't, he can't got time to be stopping for no damn police <laughs> so he was on the run you guys and uh, the police chased him you know he kept on going you know they say he was yelling out loud I ain't gonna stop I ain't gonna stop <laughs> you guys I'm telling you I'm just I'm just reporting the story Okay, I ain't, I ain't putting nothing extra on it. I'm just telling you how I read it. We gonna get a prayer circle for Cat Williams because it ain't really too much more we can do for him. Somebody needs to have a serious come to Jesus talk with him because he is really gonna be, I won't be surprised if he, if he's, if he dies, which is sad to say, but it's just like every day. Now he got a class action suit um, in Oakland uh, because y'all he was he was in a in a concert. I mean, you know, he had a show in Oakland. I don't know who keep on paying to see Cat Williams and Lauren Hill, but something is wrong with y'all too. You need your fucking head fixed. He was in Oakland. He was up there for 10 minutes and you know, he wanted to jump on everybody. So they had to actually physically pick him up and remove him from the stage. Now it's a class action suit where the the people that was at the damn show they want to sue him because they didn't get their show which is stupid okay so now they got a class action suit against him and live nation um when really they just need to get a people that got their money back like what else is it doing to their life you know we saw sue happy in the united states is stupid um all this because somebody is on some fucking drugs and ain't nobody really trying to stop them and nobody's trying to help them. I keep on saying I ain't gonna talk about Cat Williams, but I can't keep on letting good stories go by now. I need Cat Williams to get it together. I need him to get it together quick. In 
the world of love, you guys, we got a new couple alert. Looks like Sean Kingston and Roxy are a new couple. And Roxy, she keep a man, don't she? And that damn Sean Kingston keep a woman. Okay, they said that Sean Kingston, he was dating some video girl. I cannot remember her name. What was her name? Cannot remember. I didn't write it in my notes. He dated um, Shawnee, uh, I think that's her name. Isn't that the child's name? Evelyn Lozada's daughter. He even dated her for some time. And now... Uh, him and Roxy have been spotted as they was coming out of, you know, as they were trying to be discreetly um, anonymous and not known, but they coming out of a damn known ho uh, Hollywood eatery. You know, people crack me up when they try to act like they didn't want the paparazzi to see, but then they go to Mr. Child's, uh, you know, uh, crustaceans or something somewhere in Beverly Hills where they know the paparazzi is going to be mad, please. You tell it to somebody else. Sean Kingston, I don't know what it is with Sean Kingston. He must really have a golden stick for real okay because he was weird looking to me like when I see his top half I think that he's fat he got you know he got a fat man head and a fat man top ball stop right here and then the bottom part ain't really that big so like it throws me off like I'm thinking that he gonna be big and he, he not but he really got like a Rick Ross from here on up he kind of you know <laughs> he kind of thick like old Rick Ross but these cute girls love him some Sean Kingston. I want somebody to tell us a story about what Sean Kingston do in the bedroom. Don't y'all want to hear that story? No? Maybe not? Okay. And then also, you guys, in the world of love, they're saying that Lil Wayne might be finally tying the knot. He was on Sway's uh, MTV show, whatever that show is, and that when Sway asked him, you know, would he ever get remarried again, he was like, yeah, I'd get married. Y'all know he got married to Toya back in the day, only, you know, when they were kids, and, and now it looks like he's going to marry that chick. I, he's with, um, she's like a Persian girl, Iranian, or, or, or something like that. Um, I don't know her name, but anyway, they've been together for some time, um, and, uh, looks like maybe, you know, they've been hitting around on Twitter, you know, her showing rings and her saying stuff about engaging and, you know, him being engaged and all this stuff, you know, and then they come back and say it ain't really what it is, but I'm just here to let y'all know that if any of you guys was looking to get with Mr. Little Wayne, that it's probably not about to happen. <laughs> guys have noticed that I have really stayed away from the Chris Brown and the Rihanna stuff because it's just it's just more the same going back and forth between the three of them you know her and, and Pikachu and him and you know their three-way relationship and whatever it's like they're young kids and you know if that's what they want to do then fine let them do it but I have to talk about the whole big Twitter thing that um, Chris Brown had now I want you guys to understand that I do like Chris Brown I like his music and I've always been kind of rooting for him but I have to say that I don't know who his team is but they need to get him and get him under control the difference between Chris Brown and Rihanna is that Rihanna knows how to maneuver her way within the media okay she knows how to say something and not react to it she doesn't react really to what people say about her and she just kind of goes on about her life Chris Brown is a hothead who always has to respond to everything that people say to him. Now, I granted, I understand that people come for him all the time, um, unfairly so. I think that people really just have it in them to say out of, you know, just outlandish shit to him and really rude ass remarks and, you know, really attack him on Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff. Um, but at the same time, he is one. He is a genuine example of somebody who does not need to be on Twitter. Twitter is the devil, okay? And you, he needs to not be on there because he doesn't know how to conduct himself on there. Like a lot of people that, a lot of people don't. A lot of people really do get caught up in the Twitter um, hellaciousness that goes down. Anyway, let me just tell you guys what happened. Um, he said something about how, you know, how he looked on Twitter. He put a picture up and he said how old, like an old man he looked. Well, somebody responded to him who just so happened to be like a comedian, a comedian writer for like a television show or something. She responded, said some rude shit to him like, yeah, you would look like that, you know, blah, blah, blah. They end up going back and forth. You know, it's probably the worst thing to go back and forth with a comedian writer um, because they are going to probably just kind of make you look real stupid. Okay, so he was kept on trying to laugh at all. But you know, it's that laugh when you be like, <laughs> I'm going to fuck you up. It was that mad kind of, you could tell even in his responses that she was getting under his skin and he was just getting drawn into it more and more and more. Um, so, you know, he finally let it go. Then he said that it didn't bother him or whatever. But then he got off of Twitter. He needs to stay his ass off Twitter. Twitter, okay, he needs to get off Twitter. 
He need to get off Instagram. He need to get off Facebook. He need to get off Kick. He need to get off Pinterest. He need to get off a wall or whatever the hell else. Like, I got a Kick and a Pinterest, y'all. Tell me why. What are those for? What do people use it for? I'm just so tired of all these fucking social media. Tumblr. I was just like, fuck it. By the time I get to figuring out what all I need to be a part of, like, I ain't gonna have time to <laughs> get my fucking videos up trying to be on all these damn social media sites. He needs to get off of everything. He just needs to take a break and um, it's just not gonna happen. I feel like he's like surrounded by a whole bunch of yes men and nobody can get him together. I don't really think anything real tragic is gonna happen to Chris Brown but I just feel like he is you know he's not really ever gonna be recognized for his talent anymore because of you know the stupid decisions that he's making and um, so yeah that's it. I don't talk about them like I said between him and you know uh, kind of, kind of, what is her name? Karuchi, Kariuchi. See, that's Pikachu. And Rihanna, I just, I'm gonna stay away from that story because it's just gonna be more of the same all the time. But y'all, what y'all think about Chris Brown? I mean, is he unfairly targeted, or does he put his uh, own foot in his mouth all the time? It's always funny that in my reality recap reality talk I always talk about Bobby Chris but I ain't never seen the show still ain't seen not one episode but you know she's always in the blogs and I just have to talk about her so the newest thing is okay the first thing is that she and Nick are no longer together so she and her brother boyfriend are no longer together um, she said it and then Nick confirmed it on Twitter <laughs> Because, you know, that is the news media outlet now. And that they're not engaged and that they're just close friends. So, fuck buddies. And then the other thing is that uh, she got into yet another car accident. This time she totaled her car. She was in Alpharetta, which is a, you know, a, is an affluent city out here in um, Georgia. And uh, suburb of Atlanta. And she uh, lost control of her car. Um, drove off the damn embankment. Uh, flew down, you know, hit a couple of trees on the way down and then ended up on some trail. Tore up her convertible Camaro and um, they're saying that it was no drugs or alcohol involved. I don't really know what to say about Bobby Chris. I mean, this girl is going through so much and uh, it just doesn't seem like anybody's... Now, I know that she's old enough now where nobody can really make her do anything but it just seems like is anybody even around her to just be like girl come on let me just give you a hug that's another one who i'm just feeling like um you know if she don't get a handle on it soon that she might be another one that we might be hearing a, a really sad story about um you know her not making it much longer which is bad you know it's bad to see i i don't want to see bobby christina sing I don't want to see her on no damn reality show. I want somebody to be there for her and, and figure it out. You know, um, I know that she thinks that she knows it all and that, you know, she comes out and says she makes her decisions and, you know, everybody should be, you know, this is what she is and all that. But you guys, she's a baby, okay? In the grand scheme of things, she has not seen not one big part of life, okay? She don't know what she got coming ahead for her. She could be set for life, okay? But... Um, you know, with the decisions that she makes and the in the in and, and the circumstances that she finds herself in all the time is just it's sad. It is really, really sad. R and B Divas, you guys, looks like we ain't gonna have Nikki Gilbert or Faith Evans on the next uh season. They're going to replace those two girls with Angie Stone and Sunshine Anderson, which would be a good look for them. I think it's gonna be a good look for the show. Um because I do love Faith Evans, but, you know, she didn't bring nothing to the show. She really doesn't have much of personality. I thought that before the show even came on. I was like, what are we going to be sitting there looking at Faith Evans talk about? Y'all know Nikki Gilbert is certified fool, so I'm glad she ain't coming back. Um, so we'll see what this mix of girls are going to are gonna be because um, Selena, um, 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 Kiki Wyatt, and Monifa are all staying on the show. And then, like I said, who knows? Faith Evans might show up on the because they said they were going to try to have an R&B Divas um, LA version and like I said I think she lives in Los Angeles and maybe she'll end up on that show you know much like how Gloria did for Basketball Wives LA but damn like they were the executive producers and you both get ousted out of your own damn show <laughs> what happened they got to work one day and they was like uh Faith Nikki let us talk to you for a second now we know this was your idea and everything but uh, we gonna have to go on and let y'all go now at Hollywood is ruthless ain't it <laughs> Black Hollywood Atlanta speaking of Black Hollywood Atlanta Mona Scott Young is coming up with a new 
reality show. I think they said it's called Take in Atlanta. It's supposed to be about, you know, some movers and shakers here in Atlanta, some up and comers who are trying to get, you know, their feet, you know, in, in solid ground, um, fashion and music, entertainment, real estate, things like that. I don't really know the angle of the show, but I guess they're going to be following people that are trying to make a difference in those worlds here in Atlanta. Then they're going to have another show called Married to Medicine, and um, it's about, you know, wives of doctors and, and actual doctors themselves here in Atlanta as well. I don't know if that's going to be a black show. Um, but it is going to take place here in Atlanta and I guess they'll probably have a couple of black people on there if it's not indeed a black show but it, this is Atlanta black Hollywood right a little bit of talk about basketball wise well it's not really even basketball wise now that Royce is not on the show anymore but uh, since she was related to that show we'll just kind of lump her in with the damn basketball wise franchise so Royce is in this custody battle with Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard is now a Los Angeles Laker and uh, Dwight Howard makes buku 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 money. Dwight Howard is in a custody battle with uh, Royce and he is trying to get full custody of his child. Of course she doesn't want to lose full custody of her child so now she's fighting back trying to get full custody as well. Royce doesn't have Dwight Howard kind of money and I think we all know that and uh, a lot of times when people don't have the money to fight back um, they get run over you guys have seen what happened with usher and tamika you see what has happened with uh, dwight howard and royce you see what has happened with chris bosh and his baby mama you guys see what happened with Dwayne wade and siobhan it just happens okay if you don't have the money to fight back um you usually the lawyers you'll be out lawyered and um you just you just lose so she's asking for um dwight's you know dwight to pay her legal fees and i think that that's 100 percent fine she needs the money to try to fight back it should not be it's not fair that because she can't afford you know her her legal team that she should suffer and lose her child i don't even know why he wants to take the child like i haven't heard any stories about royce being this you know i mean we've all seen royce on basketball wise and yeah she makes stupid decisions in her love life but who doesn't i mean people make mistakes in their relationships and you know she's just happened we just happen to see it on tv but other than that like what has she done really that he's you know she can't have her child i don't know what it is with these men who just want to take their the child away from the mother now i know if the mother is crazy you know beating the kid you know on drugs you know not around abandoning the kids all of this then yes of course i think that you should take the child out of that kind of um environment but if it's just the matter of that you don't like the, 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 the mother and you guys don't get along, then why is it that you feel like you, your child shouldn't be around their mother? It's just, it just baffles me. I know everybody has strong opinions on, you know, these, these basketball players and the baby mamas and all of that. And, you know, but you know what? They laid down with them. They made the decision to sleep with them, make this kid with them. Whether or not they wanted the child or not, you was fucking without a condom. I know I don't need to explain the birds and the bees to y'all making millions of dollars. You don't know if you fuck somebody without a condom that you might make a baby. I think that everybody has to take responsibility. If you're going to be sleeping with these girls that may or may not be gold diggers and might have an ulterior motive and have plans to take your money and have a baby by you and, you know, have you hemmed up for 18 years, then you know what? You should be able to share responsibility just like anybody else, okay? I'm not going to be on completely on anybody's side as 50-50, okay? And that's how it should be with the custody. They should both be able to uh, be with their child and figure out joint custody. That's just... That's just how I see it. Real Housewives of Atlanta, you guys, every week is something, another one with that show. Now we're talking about the big beef between um, Kim again and NeNe. They were on Twitter, and uh, they were going back and forth last week um, about the fact that Kim got fired. Kim says that she left the show willingly because, you know, she just couldn't be there for the drama and that, you know, she was pregnant and, you know, she had a lot going on in her life, so she just decided to leave the show. NeNe came back on Twitter and said, nah, bitch, you ain't left the show, um, you got fired. Kim comes back and says, how could I get fired when I got my own show? It was like a promotion. It was no way that I could get fired if I'm going to my own show. NeNe came back and said, nah, bitch, the reason why you didn't get fired and we could they couldn't just get rid of you is because you were contracted, so it was easy enough to give you your show that you can continue on with your show but as far as real housewives of atlanta is concerned your motherfucking ass got fired and that's probably true i don't think nene would be coming out and saying all of this stuff and that nene has gotten quite vocal huh i guess i kind of 
feel like Nene not gonna be back next season because she sure is saying it. She don't give a damn, okay? She just saying it. I don't think Nene would be saying all of this um, knowing that Bravo could come back and say that she was incorrect. You guys know that Bravo always takes a stance of just not saying anything. You guys know that when Sheree got fired, I mean, we all know Sheree got fired. Uh, Sheree did say that she left willingly and Bravo didn't say anything at that time as well. I mean, they allow people to save face and, uh, you know, not get involved in the, you know, the minuscule details of why this person ain't on the show. To them, the, sh the person is off the fucking show. That's it. So now Real Housewives of Atlanta is an all-black cast, which I am very proud to say, even though it be shenanigans and tomfoolery and fuckery going on on that show, but it is an all-black cast, so that's something to be proud of. Um, Kim has her own show. It looks like everybody's happy with that setup. All right, you guys, so we do this every week. So make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you come back. Until next time, Rockstars. Bye.